Hello, welcome to Noob Perspectives, and I'm Tyler, your host for today. This is Leah. Hi, uh, I've been playing RPGs for about four years, so... And this is Sarah. Hi, I've been uh, playing RPGs for about two years, but I've tried a lot of different systems so far. And this is Tori. Hi, I've been playing for probably four years, DM'd Pathfinder for two of them, and still feel like I don't know 75% of the rulebook. Uh, and we talk about RPG concepts from a newer player perspective. Uh, today, we're tackling the concept of combat in RPGs, and uh, next time, we'll be doing an actual play to demonstrate some of these concepts. Uh, so the first question I have for, y for you all is, what is an RPG to you? Let's start with Leah. Well, RPGs, uh, in my brain, is largely a collaborative storytelling medium. So it depends uh, on um, everyone working together to create an interesting or fun story. Um, that's why I almost never read any of the rules for things. Um, as for what I feel about RPGs, uh, to me they're just a great flight of fantasy. You get together with your friends and you have a great time delving into a world whether that's um, having a goal to fight a lot of creatures or to discover a lot of it, and I'm just really excited at how many different possibilities there are in it. Yeah, I think I'm fairly similar to you, Sarah, and okay, because kind of it's more of the social aspect for me of just kind of being able to have something to do to kind of just go see friends and kind of just have fun going into a kind of a, a world where you don't really know what's happening and what's going to happen, just kind of get to go out and explore and just kind of do things with a group. Awesome. And so, uh, like I said today, we're talking about the concept of combat. That is one of the three main concepts that uh, pervade sort of all RPGs. Uh, the other two are, are related to exploration and uh, social dynamics, and we're, we're going to cover those two in other videos. Um, but as for the main three concepts, combat, exploration, and social, what uh, are your folks' favorite aspects of different RPGs? We can start with Tori. Yeah, I think uh, I think for me probably the biggest thing, at least within my set, is combat. Um, I think it's kind of always interesting to see kind of the various ways people can tackle it. Some people are very like, you know, ab I guess lack of a better term, like ability driven and like to kind of go in with like spells and like items and like do other things in that sense where some I feel like like to use a lot more of the environment and kind of try to like set up environmental traps or try to set up like other things that they can kind of pull off for these like big kind of like fancy like finishers or big kind of plays that they can kind of pull out. And I think there's just like a lot of depth and a lot of interesting ways that you can kind of go about that, which is at least for me makes it my favorite. Awesome. And uh, Leah, what is your favorite aspect of RPGs? Um, my favorite aspect is probably the social aspect because I'm not good at socializing in real life, um, but I get to pretend that I'm socializing in real life with people that I already know how to socialize with. <laughs> I can relate to that. <laughs> um, awesome. And Sarah, what about you? Um, I have a complicated answer to that question. I really enjoy uh, skill systems and the idea of your character being really good at certain things and how mm -hmm. that can be utilized in a lot of different situations. Um, that ties in with the social aspect because you can use your charisma-based skills to interact and get things that you want from non-playing characters, as well as use it to explore the world and find different things. So I, I like a bit of both. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so that's great. We seem to have a mix of people on our panel here today. Uh, Let's hop right into the discussion of combat, though. Uh, with our first question, how do I GM or or be the game master in a combat-focused game? Um, I think we can start with Tori here, as he probably has the most experience with that out of any of us. That is definitely fair. 
I, I had yeah, the one campaign I GM'd for about two years was very combat focused, as most of the people, some of everyone at least in this room was part of that, as well as some others. But um, I, I think a lot of it is kind of trying to like where you can kind of induce variety. Because, like, combat, while it is interesting, it's very easy from a GM perspective to have things at least to go stale somewhat quickly. Because, like, at the end of the day, like, you have a lot of variance in what you can set up, but players, for the most part, like, they have the way, like, their kit is set up, and they have the way that, like, they tend to go kind of about fighting. Like, you're not going to see, like, a ranger all of a sudden start running and trying to punch people or other things. So I think it kind of matters as well like, a lot to kind of give them some variants and give them some ideas oh yeah i think i think that's a, a great point because especially when you have players that start relying on certain things for example spell casters that start picking a lot of fire-based spells mm -hmm. it's really fun just to throw them into non like or like a fire-based place where they can't really use those as effectively yeah so they have to kind of branch out as well as you can, you can play a lot with like different dynamics. Um, like if if like your players, you know, tend to like want to just always stay really far back, you can try to like build more tighter encounters. Or if like you know they're always like trying to get right up close and personal with people, you can kind of try to add some variance by like forcing like ravines or like other things that kind of cause them to have to kind of switch up their gameplay a little bit to kind of get them thinking outside of their norm to kind of uh, add a bit of pizzazz to it. Awesome. I, I like pizzazz. Um, that being that being said, uh, <laughs> I think that it's important to also play into the character's strengths sometimes, mm -hmm. um, because a lot of what people like about RPGs is that they get to feel powerful. They get to feel like their characters are really cool and good at things. And if the GM looks at a ranger character that's really great with a bow and's like, I'm gonna put you in narrow hallways all the time, yeah. and that kind of makes might make the player feel a little bit invalidated in their choices. Mm -hmm. um, so I do like the idea of switching it up uh, and forcing the the players and the characters to interact with situations that they aren't comfortable in. That being said, being comfortable is fun sometimes. Yeah. yeah, that's a great point, Tyler. I think that you definitely have to make sure that while you challenge them, your players still have fun with what they're doing. Yeah, like, it, it all very much does come down to kind of that balancing act, which I feel like is very widespread across a lot of GMing, is kind of that overall balance. Because it's true, like, you want to make sure that the characters still feel powerful, and if, like, as per your example, you know, always, always putting a ranger in, like, a, you know, tight set of you know, narrowing corridors versus, you know, putting your monk always on the other side of, like, a you know, 80 foot ravine, like putting challenges in there to kind of make them think out of the box is always a good thing, but that should never be used as a consistent piece because it can just lead to characters kind of being beat down and feeling like they can't really do anything in the situations you provide. Yeah, of course. Um, so that's a, that's a quick discussion of what it takes to, or what, what experience we have GMing uh, combat based <laughs> games. What about your experience playing in them? Um, I know that some of us here at the uh, at at noob perspectives are more focused on the playing aspect uh, of the game. So let's jump to Leah. Uh, what's what's your experience playing in a more combat focused adventure or game? Um, whenever I'm in a combat focused uh, game, I tend to think of it more of like a a strategic battleground than I do a role playing game. I think somewhere in my brain there's a separation uh, where, in a way, when you roll initiative, it kind of becomes a different game. Fair. Okay, yeah. Um, as far as discussion about keeping things varied, as someone who uh, literally played a fire sorcerer last week in a fire dungeon, <laughs> <laughs> sometimes forcing people out of their comfort zone limits their options more than it forces them to do more varied things. Very true. That's true, that's true. Yeah, we do have to keep in mind that, uh, especially s with systems that have, like, magic users and, and things like that, we tend, those players tend to focus on that thing. <laughs> and if they can't do that thing, then sometimes it feels like they can't do very much. Um, 
especially when you have newer players who aren't as comfortable with the system or comfortable with different uh, aspects of role playing in general. Um, as a as a GM myself, uh, if if I like the idea of of the combat being a sort of like different part of the game you're playing like a mini game within the game mm -hmm. because role playing games especially games like D&D and Pathfinder were born out of war games yeah. it makes a lot of sense that it feels like these are different parts of the game um when you're playing in a in a combat based game it tends to be one of these one of these systems, right? Uh, there's the D and D systems. There's the the Pathfinder systems. There's other systems as well um, that are more aligned towards combat. Um, and if you're a person who prefers role play, I guess uh, what is your sort of interaction with combat in that in that idea like that realm sarah i'm so happy you brought that up because i played a super passive cleric in a campaign where i couldn't harm any other creatures i couldn't kill them and so that was really hard when my party came across um any kind of combat situations we would roll initiative and i would suddenly be left with fewer options because i had to support more heavily and heal which is hard for when you're in that kind of combat mentality but it's also not like set in stone we came across a situation at one point where we had to eliminate a bunch of centaurs for a quest and we got there and um things happened the encounter started we had to roll initiative but I was determined to be more diplomatic in that situation. So even in initiative, after a few blows were thrown, I said, no, 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 like I can, I can fix this. I can make this better, different. Uh, and so I, in the middle of combat, rolled diplomacy and got high enough where the opposite side was willing to hear what we had to say. And so that was able to turn things around. Um, just a quick clarification for anyone who doesn't know, I think, Sarah, you're referring to a Pathfinder 2nd Edition game. Yes, I um, am. Where, again, combat does tend to be, it, the, the, does tend to be more of a centerpiece of that game, um, with more of the rules revolving around combat, though it does, uh, have a lot of rules surrounding other, uh, aspects of the game as well. Uh, which, again, we're not talking about today, but we will talk about, um, um, I think there's also a lot of games in systems that you're not talking about where there isn't a line between when you are and aren't in combat. Uh, specifically what comes to mind is games in the Apocalypse system, Apocalypse Engine. Oh yeah. Where um, there's no initiative and players act in whatever order they want to act as if they weren't in a combat situation. Okay. I think it, there's no there's no difference between what you can and can't do in combat. Like mechanically, you just are now uh, taking turns doing something different than you were taking turns doing before. Okay. Um, for those people who don't know, the the system that that Lee is referring to is called the Powered by the Apocalypse system. Uh, it's PBTA for short. Um, there are a lot of games that run off that system. Uh, yeah, so that's that's really interesting. How, uh, I assume you've played in some games like that. Yeah. Uh, can you give us some examples uh, about how that works? Uh, sure. Um, I guess the main example I can think of is when we played uh, the Sprawl, which is a powered by the apocalypse game, set in like a sci-fi dystopia. Um, and so when you go from doing something like. Uh, exploring the subway to try to find something um, or track someone down and then you get stuck in a moving subway car with four people holding AK-47s. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds oddly but, specific. But, you know, the, that common situation that everyone runs into. Of course. This person sees and some stuff. <laughs> so there's, there's never any line uh, drawn between what you're doing and the consequences of what you're doing. Um, 
it's just a, an immediate... I don't know, it just feels more similar because there is no line of initiative and because you don't have to wait for your turn and because there's no set amount of time that you have to take or set number of actions that you have to take, you're more open to um, doing different things like you're in a dangerous situation and you're gonna um, to throw out of another very specific situation um, strip naked a pilot wear his clothes <laughs> and <laughs> pretend to be him another <laughs> very <laughs> specific <laughs> example you know we, we speak in generalizations <laughs> on uh, new perspectives very specific terms so even if you're in combat you're not doing combat things and and I feel in that like I guess in those systems you can you can end up in combat a lot more kind of out of the blue, whereas oh, yeah. like systems more like with like Pathfinder you're you're aware of very easily like when like if if someone's going to kind of try to fight you, you're gonna more or less know like the DM may throw like kind of like a sucker punch at you kind of a thing like before initiative kind of really comes out, but there is more of that kind of clear separation of when you are in more of a heavy fight and when you're not versus I guess in more of this side it can very easily kind of blend and sway between the two very simply and you never quite know what you're gonna end up in and and I guess the the next obvious question is how do you feel about that separation what is what does that do to your gameplay experience how does that make combat feel for especially for those of us who enjoy the combat aspect a little bit more than maybe the role player social aspect of it uh, how does how does that does it? Do you feel like it will detract from the combat because you like the tactical aspect of it, or what's the, what's your, per, what's your take on that? Even if you've never played in a game like that, how do you feel like it would would impact your your enjoyment of it? I don't know. I feel I feel it's kind of hard to tell because yeah, like that's it's not a system I've really had experience in, so I think it'd be something I'd have to kind of get more time in as it's hard to really know when you haven't really been in there. Mm -hmm. Though, like, I don't know, I, I don't feel like... Like, I definitely notice when doing something like Pathfinder, the clear discerning of kind of when you're in combat or not. Like, it's definitely a noticeable piece, but I don't think it would be something really that would affect me too much if it was more fluid. Like, I don't think that would really bother me in much of a sense. Mm -hmm. But obviously, it's hard to tell. Mm -hmm. um, I think something that's that this relates to something Sarah brought up earlier talking about you know trying to take the diplomatic route out of a out of a combat instead of um, mm -hmm. instead of going all punchy punchy stabby stabby um, sure. um, I've been playing recently in a blades in the dark campaign and that also has a very uh, wouldn't say completely gone but it's like a thinner divide between the rest of the campaign and what can be considered a combat situation um, I've been playing in an ass uh, assassination group dynamic, so we're meant to go more stealthily in and try to deal with situations, so when we start our job, which could be the combat equivalent here, um, we enter the situation, we start trying to fix things and start trying to solve the problems as they come up, and when we're encountering, for example, um, an enemy who doesn't really know why we're there, we do have several different options, so we could either um, attack them, kill them, get rid of evidence, and then proceed, or we could try to be diplomatic and say, oh no, we definitely have a purpose here, we definitely aren't sneaking in here to assassinate someone, even though clearly we are. So there's that kind of choice there, whichever route you want to take based off of your personal playstyle and the group's goals. Um, I think the distinction that occurs in-game when you have to do something like roll initiative makes it a lot harder to do something like back out of a combat because it feels inevitable that the, that violence will occur if you've already rolled initiative even if it hasn't begun whereas mm -hmm. in a game where you don't have to do something like roll initiative if someone's holding a gun against your head there is no marker to tell you that you're now supposed to do violence Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, th that makes a lot of sense. Like, if if you know, if you were trying to like 
rescue a hostage if if you were in like a situation where your DM like puts you in that setup and it's like oh, okay like you, the person you're trying to rescue is like being I don't know like held against like a sword or something if if it comes down to like what are you going to do about that versus like roll initiative mm-hmm. really one definitely does give more of that implication of like you're meant to fight this out mm-hmm. versus like you're meant to take kind of whatever routes you can see to get around just this obstacle rather than necessarily having to go to combat. And I feel like even with Pathfinder and things where you can be more, I guess, like, there is more of that separation that implies combat, Mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that you can't go diplomatic ways, even Mm -hmm. like Sarah had mentioned before. Like, there are still options to go that route, but there is, I feel, more of, like, a almost like a pressure to, like, well, we've been told to roll initiative that, like, we should be fighting this rather than trying to take other routes. That definitely is something that, especially new players, feel like uh, like it's it's the time for combat now. We are doing the combat roles. We are doing mm-hmm. the like roll initiative. Those two words have a lot of connotation behind them, right? Um, and I think that this brings us into a little bit of of our next topic, which is: Can you still do role playing? in a combat focused game can you still like do the the talky talky bits especially for those people who enjoy that in a game where you know you're doing a dungeon crawl maybe there's lots of uh combats maybe every room there's a new combat or a trap that you have to do or some some sort of like uh, that that role initiative happens a lot. Can you still interact with the other characters? Can you still make yourself uh, like your own person in that, or are you just a ball of stats? Yeah, I I think like it, it's definitely possible. It, I, it definitely changes it to a degree, but like I still feel you can very much role play because I think there are many ways to still kind of embody your character and your character's ideas. That in, that like are in in ways that aren't necessarily verbal. Like I have I have certain campaigns that I run in right now where like I'm running necessarily like a barbarian that was more of like an arena fighter and like I feel like when I go into combat there's still a lot of even role playing me kind of going into what I'm doing in the sense of being able to kind of go in and like it's not just kind of a go and you're cautious like you're going in and you're fighting and it's like a brutal thing and you can sometimes even do like these like big like flurry finishers that are kind of like you know for the arena to get the crowd riled up rather than just like stabbing someone with a sword and being like yay i win like there there's still ways to kind of build who your character is and kind of role play their setup in a combat um I think the answer to this question really depends on what system you're using and who your uh, DM, GM, whoever's running it, how they chose to run it. Because if you're doing uh, something that's more uh, open world, they've created a situation for you, um, you have a lot more freedom and choice. For example, I played in a uh, Pathfinder 2nd Edition campaign that was completely open world, created by the DM, um, and he, uh, was Tyler actually, and he allowed us to prepare for a big combat situation, like a huge war, um, against multiple enemies by going around and collecting allies, and this could be, this could have been done through, like, besting them in combat and saying, like, now you've fallen under my control, you must follow me into battle, or it could have been, hey, uh, we would love if you could help us with this, in exchange we'll offer you this when we win. And so in those situations where you have the choice and freedom to prepare for combat with a bit more um, social aspects, it is great, but I don't know how that would play in more modular um, Pathfinder situations or even a different system completely. Um. So we've got this uh, this idea. We talked about this idea where it, once you roll initiative, combat has started. Once combat has started, and Tori's talked about this, how you can add flourishes a little bit um, to eat to your your how you go about the fight. exactly exactly. Uh, and you know maybe your character is uh, really 
frightened. I played a character once uh, who was a ranger character who had uh, who used a longbow and really hated to be up close and personal with the enemies because they were afraid of dying. Um, and so they stayed as far back as possible, and that was their MO during combat. That was how they sort of used the the subsystem of combat to pull out some character traits a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I remember at points you even sometimes even almost tried to walk off the map. You were trying to there, walk so far away. <laughs> there there were a lot of times, yeah, because, um, you know, battle maps are as... Uh, it's only a hundred tiles wide. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, he had a lot of range. Um, <laughs> and so, and so, yeah, so I, I, I picked, you know, feats and, and again, this was Pathfinder 2nd Edition, I picked feats and, and traits that allowed my character to be that and, and to, to roleplay that frightened, like, I am going to leave at any moment if this starts going badly <laughs> type, um... Of, of of character even though this this game was I would I would say it's pretty most of the game was combat there was again like it, it, no game is like entirely like we're gonna roll dice and do combat because that's just a war game and you're not playing an RPG um, that, be <laughs> that being said I, I guess I don't want to say that because I don't want to say anyone's wrong in any way that they play RPGs, because everyone's way of playing an RPG is just mm -hmm. as valid as anyone else's way, as long as everyone at the table is having a good time. Oh, exactly. Um, so, you know, I don't want to say that you're playing RPGs wrong. That's just... Your preference. Yeah, my so. preference is having a little bit of that role play within it. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. You have something to add? Um, I agree that role playing, while it in active combat uh, can be done and it has mostly to do with your character's physical actions like if you're risking your character's life for someone they care about that's role playing and it's but it's a lot often a lot less clear mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because it's an action that you're taking instead of words that your player is saying right it goes along with that uh, that's old storytelling adage, the show don't tell sort of thing. You're not saying, I care very much about this maiden in distress, so I will save them. You're no. just just no. going to save them. You're you're in a lot of <laughs> danger, and everyone's telling you to run away, but you're going to stand here. Or or maybe your characters really, they love gold. Uh, <laughs> I, I played in a campaign, uh, or no, uh, it was a different, uh, I played in a, I, I DM'd a campaign where one of the players really hated an NPC, and they hated this person so badly that they uh, that they risked their life entirely. In fact, they went down in order to uh, destroy this NPC. Even though they heard reinforcements coming, they went further into the fray. Uh, so playing up that aspect as well can be even can even be an example of role playing. It's mm -hmm. not necessarily the most tactical decision you can make even if the game, which again was Pathfinder 2nd Edition, is a tactical, has tactical combat involved with it. Yeah, and I, I guess it comes down to kind of the overarching point of when it comes to roleplay, there's more than just what your character says, kind of, there's what you do and how you do it, and a lot of these other aspects that are sometimes overlooked that kind of come into the roleplay rather than just kind of how they talk to other characters in that kind of sense. Awesome. Um, so, we've talked a lot uh, about different systems. We talked about Pathfinder 2nd Edition, uh, we've talked about um, Powered by the Apocalypse games, uh, specifically the Sprawl, um, we've talked about Blades in the Dark. Are there any games that you feel seem to like combat, by that I mean seem to play combat more effectively in your experience? What are, what are games where the, 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 the combat is maybe the focus, maybe it's the best part of the game, or, or this game does combat the best, in your opinion? Yeah, I, I have said it's similar, but I think it's more of the other side in the way of... It, not necessarily that I have experience with systems that necessarily maybe more glorify combat than others, but some that I feel punish it more than others, okay. and that kind of still play into that kind of idea on 
more or less combat based systems as like we've played cons we've played um we played some RPGs such as like Burning Wheel, whereas like yes, there is still combat based into it, but in something like Pathfinder, you know, you get stabbed, you know, depending on how bad it is, you can go to bed or have a cleric heal you, and like within a within a night or even a few, if it's bad, you can get yourself kind of back healed. Whereas something with you know, like a Burning Wheel system, you know, if you get really heavily wounded or you get something some kind of issues. You know, in a normal session, you're maybe running a day or two, but then you can end up being wounded for what is in-game, like... Twelve months? Months to years. <laughs> and, like, having that kind of a insanely heavy detriment that could borderline, if you're, you know, doing a session a week, you could almost have a full year of actual real-life sessions where your character has been very heavily injured and has, you know, many debuffs or other detriments that kind of affect now how you can do anything else. And I think, like, so, I guess there's definitely some systems that maybe glorify it more, but I feel there's also a lot of the other side in systems that really kind of beat you down for trying to kind of fight. Yeah, in that same way of thinking, on the complete opposite side, um, Dungeons & Dragons does a great job of having you battle ready almost always. Because mm -hmm. um, we're in the burning wheel, you get injured, you take months to years to recover, um, in Dungeons and Dragons, you can recover almost completely in a short rest. Like you can get back your spell slots or your um, for monks key points. You're like the things that you need to be ready for the next battle. Mm -hmm. So they're really good at supporting lots of small encounters consecutively, or even just like going through and being ready for the next big one. So it's like combat is much better had in that system where you're not going to be held down by your injuries for too long. Right, yeah, so if you're going for, if you're, uh, I guess the, to summarize this a little bit, if you're going for a, a game where you want there to be like dungeons and, and every time you go into a new room there's new goblins, new kobolds, new mooks to fight, um, d d Pathfinder, games like this are uh, a bit better of a choice if you have to choose a system because they do allow that, that multiple combat experience a little bit better. Whereas, like Tori mentioned, if you want your combat, even, even if you are running a combat focused game, Burning Wheel can still work if you want your combat to be deadly. If you want your combat to affect your mm -hmm. character in a long term, like, real way, right? In in D&D &D, um, conditions tend not to last for a very long time. Um, until you get to, you know, very high levels where you can have monsters, like, draining your actual stats, and that's terrifying, but, um, things like Burning Wheel, things like Fate, as well, uh, as a system, uh, have, uh, this, instead of, like, hit points, you have consequences, mm -hmm. which can be a more, uh, a more permanent, uh, form of detriment to yourself, Right, you might get burned, you might break a leg, yeah. um, and so these these types of games do combat well, just differently. Yeah, and I, and I feel it also then really plays into e even it affects some of the role play side as well into that because you have to really be careful and kind of what you're willing to get yourself into. Like if I'm playing like a system like Pathfinder, mm -hmm. I mean like. It's, oh, there's something that's, you know, some giant massive ape or something. It's like, I, even though I necessarily, I necessarily don't think I should fight it, I know that you can to a degree because even if, you know, even if I have like 70 health and I like drop down to like one or two, I know that like within a few days with healers, I can get right back. The, the, there isn't a lot of necessarily long-term consequence to any injuries I get received. It's like, oh no, I'm stabbed. Like, mm -hmm. that that's mm -hmm. fine, I can fix that quite simply. Right. Versus something like in Fate or in Burning Wheel or some of these other systems, you have to be very, very cautious on how you kind of approach combat and how your character would feel about going into that because exactly of kind of your earlier point, it, it can be really life or death in a mm -hmm. lot of these situations. Mm -hmm. Like, the, the chance of your character kind of just fully dying super easily in Pathfinder, I mean, you have to get, you have to get hit enough, and then you have to fail your saves, and then you have to, like, everything else. There's a lot it takes necessarily to go fully dead down, mm -hmm. versus in something like some of these other systems, you get stabbed in the wrong place at the wrong time, and you can die 
insanely fast. Just the consequence side can be that much more heavy and can really affect kind of how you play a character. Yeah. Uh, to go even further than Burning Wheel and, uh, and Fate uh, in terms of consequences and things like that, there are, even, there are other games like Call of Cthulhu um, and uh, more indie games like Mothership, which mm -hmm. are more horror games, yeah. uh, which have even worse uh, combat um, yeah. consequences. Games where you're, ex you're expected to die. Right, yeah. right. And in these, you can, again, still run more combat-focused games and play in more combat-focused games in these systems. The expectations for the players just has to be different in that when, if and when you do get into combat in these systems, which again, if you're running a combat-focused game, it's more of a when than an if, um, the expectation is that your characters can and will die. Mm -hmm. um, they're not heroes. They're not, they're not super-powered beings. They, they are regular old people. It's especially in just one thing like Mothership, where almost the purpose of the DM, unlike other setups, where it's usually like to kind of bring you a story, things like Mothership, the goal of the DM is borderline to kill you every session. Mm -hmm. Like, that's what they're actively trying to do. Yeah, um, with Mothership uh, especially, uh, for those who don't know it, it is a uh, more sci-fi, horror, uh, almost space-themed uh, RPG. And so I'd have to say that the combat system in place there is actually a tool for deeper immersion because if you're in space and aliens are trying to kill you, you don't expect to survive long if you've seen any movies like that. You love the <laughs> drama, you love getting injured and stumbling through, and that's exactly what you're going to get in that system. And so it's just different combat for stronger type of role-playing. Yeah, like, I I have felt, like, a fear playing Mothership that I have not felt, like, in any other setup. So just due to exactly kind of like that mentality of, like, you know, if, if I'm with other systems, if I have a challenge put ahead of me, like, I expect to be able to kind of, like, oh, you know, I, I could either engage with it or I could not, versus in, like, Mothership, where it's, like, you're being hunted and it's meant to be this horror aspect where you're meant to die. Mm -hmm. When I see traces of, like, oh, no, like, you know, someone's been murdered over here, where in other situations I'd be like, oh, that's unfortunate, we could look into that. It's like, oh, no, what's here? Like, what's coming? I... I, you you lose that kind of fallback mentality of feeling like you can really just run away because you know you're being just hunted and the DM is setting up to try and kind of kill you off and that yields like a very very combat focus but then also kind of fear based mentality of like you don't know what's coming at any point and you don't really know if you're even going to come out of session alive. Yeah, I think that something that the reason that Mothership feels like that is not because of like the way the monsters are structured or anything like that, Mothership yeah. actually doesn't come with any monsters in the in the the book itself. Um, <laughs> what, I apologize for the cat. There are cats. Um, <laughs> what it does what it does come with though are the rules where your die rolls are incredibly hard to succeed oh, at. So um, bad in Pathfinder D and D. Uh, games that we have brought up before, you're expected to succeed like if you're en encountering a task that's around your level uh, and you know we can talk about balancing encounters and getting things around levels later um, that you're expected to succeed roughly 50% of the time right? Maybe a little more, maybe a little less depending on how difficult the challenge is um, but about 50% in Mothership, if you are have a 30% chance to succeed, that's, high. that's really good. <laughs> so, yeah. just the, the sheer terror of the die roll um, <laughs> does help to bring that fear into the combat as well. Yeah, a clear emphasis there on die roll. <laughs> <laughs> oh, puns. Okay. Um... <laughs> Well, I think that uh, we've talked a lot about combat today. We've talked about different systems. Uh, we've talked about how different systems do combat differently. Um, in fact, we've talked about how we don't necessarily like some systems over other systems. We just use 
them differently, right? Games like Mothership have games like Mothership have more terrifying combat. Games like Fate and Burning Wheel have more consequential combat. Games like D and D and Pathfinder have more consistent combat. Mm -hmm. um, we've talked about how you can role play inside of combat, how you can bring out your character's ideals, like Sarah talked about with her cleric wanting to reach for diplomacy before reaching for the stabby stabbies. Uh, we talked about how Tori's gladiatorial character uh, reaches for the boasting, bef <laughs> even potentially before the combat is victorious. <laughs> Always victory. <laughs> um, and we talked about, uh, from Leah, how combat doesn't have to be its own thing in some systems, like, uh, like the Sprawl and other Powered by the Apocalypse games. Combat doesn't start when you roll initiative, it just is always. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a separate subsystem within the game. Um, so I would first and foremost like to I, I, I thank all of uh, the, the panelists here today, <laughs> all of my fellow noobs. Um, thank you for, for joining me. Um, and next time on uh, Noob Perspectives, we'll actually be playing out a combat-focused session. Uh, so thanks for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you next time. See you then. See ya.